Hi everybody, welcome to my video. I begin in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you again to help me as I record your words. Please dip every word I speak in your precious blood so they will reach all those you wish to communicate with. I ask this of the Father in your name. Amen. Okay, this is a very, very powerful um, message from Jesus. Uh, and it's entitled, Jesus Speaks About Humility, Revenge, the Ego, and Pride. Okay, it's a lengthy message, so I'm going to have to do it in two parts. Um, when I do an extra, an ultra-long one, it always gets knocked off, and it takes me forever to try to get it on. So um, that's another reason for me doing it in two parts. And, and uh, Jesus speaks to us. He says to my friend, write for me. I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end. I am the firstborn of the Father, the only begotten Son, and the only one that will ever be. Therefore, I am the end of the line, as it were, although the beginning, yet you are all sons of the Father, yet my own sons. Is this not unusual, different from how the line of man is? For the end cannot continue the line, but with me, although I am the end of the line, as it were, I am at the beginning of the line of my father's children. Are we not one, my father and I? Am I not his firstborn? Am I not the last, the direct heir of his kingdom? And yet, for the sake of repetition, from me come the long, everlasting line of sons for my father. The ways of God are not the ways of man. When you see this, when you accept this, you see the workings of the Father to be glorious and not to be equaled in any wise with the workings of man. Man then must accept his own smallness in God's greatness, his own puniness in God's vastness, his own singular insignificance in God's magnificence. In doing so, he will be better able to acknowledge that he must bow down in all humility to the deific being which is his Father. To bow down in humility and meekness to the almighty and all gracious, meaning here full of all graces, Father, acknowledging his own littleness and giving to the almighty his due obeisance, causes man by this act of humility to grow and to achieve in spiritual essence the ultimate greatness of spirit for which he should aim. It would seem that heaven works in contradictions. It does not. To become great and to approach nearer and nearer to the Godhead, one must first become little. One must shed all pretense of personal greatness, shrink in personal enormity, for as the ego shrinks, the spirit grows. As the ego enlarges, the spirit shrinks. Is not greatness of spirit through humility then to be desired? This is the greatest test which man must face. This is the test that Satan failed, in which lost him his rightful place beside the Godhead. It is part of his own ego which he dispenses to man everywhere, causing him much turmoil, much strife, much disaster, for it is only the truly humble who can know true peace. And then he tells my friend to write this down. Write. I say this so you, um, so that when you learn this and desire to be great in spirit, you will try as all my saints once did, to develop greatness of spirit by subduing this dangerous self. And for my Protestant brothers and sisters, Jesus is referring to the holy saints in heaven. I continue reading God's words. The ego proclaims itself by inflated personal pride. So too humility proclaims itself by the absence of the one... Um, I'm sorry, uh, so too humility proclaims itself by the absence of inflated egoism. When I speak of pride, it is not meant that one should not have some little pride in achievement, some little pride in the fact that God's good fortune has been extended to you by his designing ways and means for your salvation. 
the greatest of which was done by holy sacrifice, some little pride in the fact that suffering, some little pride in physical achievement, I stress little, through the help of heaven, again I stress little, for much pride is the main component of the defeating ego of which I have just spoken. When children feel pride in things, and what they are wearing, doing, etc., this is no detriment to them, for it is done in innocence. As they grow, the parents should direct this pride into the spiritual realm of thinking. It is not usually so. It is often stressed that they should be proud of their achievements without giving God the glory, that they should better themselves physically and financially, etc., but not spiritually. And the confusion of values lead eventually to either loss of self-esteem when there is failure to achieve and to be honored, or, on the other hand, warped egos. Parents should be careful how they nurture pride in their young. It is a delicate thing, a delicate flower to be treated with deference to God, with the joy of achievement through God, with thoughtfulness towards others, and not just that he or she is number one human being and must remain so, but teaching gratitude for achievement through God. Over low self-esteem, on the other hand, cannot be confused with humility. It is often a warped and damaged ego. Root causes are many. Seeking humility, then, through the grace of the Godhead, will enable a proper balance to be achieved. This is the end of part one. May we be blessed by Jesus' holy words. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen.